get started. Um, first of all, I want to let you know that this webinar is being recorded, so we'll be posting this and sharing this on our website afterwards. Um, the second thing is there's a chat section, so if you have any questions whatsoever, please send us a chat message. Um, the third is for those who registered but uh, did not get to attend and you, when you have questions afterwards, please feel free to shoot me an, an email with any questions you may have. With that, I'll get started. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Hai, co-founder of Affluence, uh, and today's webinar is about Party Matrix for Microsoft Teams and Outlook. It will be an introductory webinar. So with that, um, we'll be covering the basic features in the web in the Party Matrix application itself with an emphasis of showing you how to get the most out of Microsoft Teams and Outlook. So uh, if you, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me a message here. I will have this open. So what is Party Matrix? Party Matrix is a comprehensive email priority and project management software. The way I like to think about it is Party Matrix is a communication tool. What it does is it communicates to the rest of your team what your priorities are across all your projects and all your responsibilities so that nothing falls through the crack, so that you're not losing track of the most important work you have at any moment in time. So what makes Party Matrix different and better than some of the other existing solution that you may have? Um, first, we use the four quadrant methodology as the core to help promote effective prioritization. So I'll go into that a little bit more. The other aspect of Party Matrix is that we're Microsoft 365 security certified for the web app, Outlook app, as well as the Teams app. And of course, we're Outlook's editor's choice app. Um, there are aspects of AI inside Party Matrix to help you achieve your goals better. And then um, Party Matrix also has really deep integrations into Microsoft Teams itself that will enhance your experience working one on one. And then finally, um, there are templates that you can create within Party Matrix itself that would allow you to share within your organization to save you a lot of effort down the road, especially if you have repeated processes and so forth. Party Matrix is available as a SaaS solution, a HIPAA compliant solution, as well as an Azure government cloud solution. So what I'm covering here today is our standard SaaS solution, which is very, very easy and straightforward to sign up. And uh, if you are interested in the other enterprise solution, definitely send me a message. There's a famous quote attributed to President Eisenhower, what is important is seldom urgent and what is urgent is seldom important. And the core of underlying in this is that every single day we're being bombarded by all sorts of things that actually requires our attention, but does not necessarily um, add value, right? Those are the things that are urgent, but not important. Like when I wake up in the morning, I'll get 30 or 40 emails. The vast majority of them aren't that critical, but there are some that actually should stand out and where I should focus my time. But likewise, for you and, and so many others out there, that information, those, those pings and so forth come from many different sources in Microsoft Teams, out, um, emails, as I mentioned, task management software, meetings, and so forth. So, Imagine if I asked you to take a piece of paper right now and start noting down all the things you have to do. And on that piece of paper, uh, write down the things that you have to do today, the things you have to do this week, the things you have to do this quarter. And then the second part of it is asking you to decide what should you work on. Will you work on the things at the top or will you work on the things at the bottom or somewhere in between? How do you decide that? So instead of having this list, what I would ask you to do is instead take those action items and start splitting them into the criteria of perhaps importance and urgency, right? But then also got to be done right now. And then what are the things that are important but got to be done next? And what are the things that are not so important but does require your attention? So if we were to do something like that, the way you can imagine it, this list of yours becomes a matrix. On the top left will be the do now. These are the things that adds the most value to you if you actually execute. And then the things that are important, but not 
not do at this moment, right? Those are the things you should plan for. So ironically, if you are on top of everything, your quadrant one should be empty because you're actually on top of things. There's nothing that requires your attention. And then instead, what you're doing is you're spending your time planning on what you should tackle next. The delegate um, quadrants are things that uh, if you can actually outsource it to somebody else, maybe somebody else can execute on this better, or maybe um, there's a way to actually not do it at all, right? That's where it belongs in delegate. And then the inbox is pretty much where you start your day um, as in a new task or new action item goes in the inbox. And then from there, you decide which quadrant it belongs in. So that's how you could approach this entire management aspect of, aspect of this in a four quadrant methodology. So when I said that party matrix is a communication tool, what I mean is you have this piece of paper with all your action plans and all your priorities. And imagine you start walking around the office and compare notes, right? You go to your manager and say, hey, by the way, these are my priorities. Do you agree or disagree? Uh, and then you go to your colleagues that you work with on critical projects. You do the exact same, the exact same thing. And then you finally go to the people who report to you and look at their matrices and do you have alignment? The interesting thing in all of this is that if everyone agrees on everything, right? You go around the office and there's no disagreement whatsoever, you don't need party matrix. That means you have everything figured out. But the reality is there will be disagreements. And not only that, there'll be disagreement on really, really important projects. And then suddenly you're spending all this time working on tasks that you thought were important. But ironically, you know, to your manager, it may not be, or to your manager's manager, it may not be. And then the reverse of this happens too, which is your teammates or your coworkers or the people reporting to you are working on things that actually is not that important. And so the Eisenhower matrix and the approach that we have in this particular methodology forces you to make that key decision right now and it forces you to prioritize. And that's the hardest part, but that's where we add the most value. Party matrix as a software is a digital version of everything I've just talked about here to make it easier for you to communicate your priorities, to make it easier for you to track the task. And that's what this presentation is all about. Again, for those who are um, who just joined, this webinar will be recorded. It will be available on affluence.com slash webinars. We'll also have a lot more webinars on there as well. And of course, if there's any questions whatsoever, contact to support at Affluence. There's a chat inside here. Um, and so if you have any questions, go ahead and send a message and I'd be happy to address it during this presentation. And with that, I'm going to jump into the part of matrix demo. All right, so as I showed you in the um, four quadrant methodology, the do now, do later, delegate and inbox. If you open up Party Matrix, and here I have Party Matrix in Microsoft Teams. Again, that's where we're focusing today's presentation on, which is how do you actually manage your priorities? How do you actually communicate your priorities to everyone else within your organization? And then do in a way that actually requires the least context switching. So many, many of our customers use Microsoft Teams already. The idea around having Party Matrix embedded inside Teams is so then you're not switching apps. You're not going and open another application in order for you to track your priorities or figure out what you need to work on. So in order to get Party Matrix, simply go to the App Store and search for Party Matrix. Now we do have three versions of Party Matrix, which is our standard version, our HIPAA compliant version, as well as our government cloud version. Again, the blue one is what I'm demoing today, which is our standard version. Once you install Party Matrix, simply pin it on the uh, left-hand panel here, choose pin, and then you get this quadrant view. So this right here is where you start your day, and this is what a project is. So the idea around a project could be one, it could be an actual project that you're working on, right? Um, that might be something that starts today and ends in three months. The second way to look at it is it's just, the lists of tasks that you have. So imagine if this was your personal action item list, and these are all the things that you're thinking about. So let's just get started. I'm going to create a task, and I'm going to say follow up with webinar per, um, participants. Okay, so that's a very, very simple task because that's something that I want to get done, and I want to make sure that I have it in my to-do list, for lack of better words. But 
if I just put that, then I don't know when I'm gonna get it done. Will I get it done today or tomorrow? So instead I can just do and say, do tomorrow. Well, actually tomorrow Saturday. So how about do next week? Okay, when I create a task like that. So what Party Matrix does is we use natural language interpretation to look at the action item that you create and then set those due dates for you. Due dates are actually really important because if we talk, to talk about importance and urgency, if you don't know when something is due, how do you know when to get started? So I highly recommend leveraging this natural language aspect of party matrix in order for you to track your task. So, and, and that's pretty much how you create a task. Now, when I create a task on the right hand side, there's a, something called the item details. Item details is essentially a breakdown of additional metadata, the additional information regarding that task. You have the task name right here. You have the project it belongs in because I can move it to another project if needed. And then of course I can go and I can star a task. When I star a task, what it's doing is it's actually sign um, signaling party matrix that, hey, this is important. So I wanna make sure I'm alerted about this and so forth. And then down here you have what's called the owner. And every task has a owner, one single owner. Um, but you can have other people who are actually relevant uh, to the task, and those are called followers. And then you have progress, which means zero for 100%. 100% means done. Zero means hasn't been started yet. Effort, how, how much time it takes. And then you have that due date, like I mentioned, which is this is due next week, as you saw how I created this task and I introduced natural language. But then there's something called reminders. And reminders is actually very, very different. Um, and it's, it's extremely useful as well, because this is something I do all the time. Let's say you're working on um taxes right taxes is, was due april 15th or something like that um but if you wait until april 15th to do your taxes clearly you don't even get that done so you want to be reminded ahead of time and so the idea is you have something due at a certain time but then the party matrix should go and surface that to you um as many times as needed for you to get started so i since i have this due date already set i want to make sure that i'm reminded so remind me monday and so what is happening right now is when I type this into Party Matrix, the green text is an indication that our system is processing it using a natural language again to help you um, prioritize this task. And so you see now that I have this in place, um, I have a, a task and I have all this meta, metadata on it. Down here is the chat. You can think of the chat as a way to track the history of all the changes for the task. And it's it's um, as you use Microsoft Teams, one of the things you know is that you and your colleagues might be talking about so many different things at any point in time. So it becomes extremely challenging to be to have the context you need for any particular task. So a chat here is a chat specific only to this particular task. And so it's stored within Party Matrix, but it's a way for everyone to be on the same page. And the nice thing about this too is it provides a history of all the changes that's that's happening um, inside inside this particular task. And so when you six months from now, right? Imagine if your colleague had some updates about their task, but then they leave the organization or they're on vacation or or on some sort of leave, you can still look at this and understand why decisions were being made, what are the priorities and so forth. Then there's the note section. The note section is just a way to add additional information about the task. It's not meant to be a rich text environment. That's something you can do in Microsoft Word, but you can create subtasks. So for example, I do subtask one, subtask two, subtask three, right? Allowing me to, to create subtasks within this particular task. And then there's the resource section. The resource section is where you can attach files, documents, links, emails and so forth, all within the context of this task. So then if you were assigning this to somebody, they have everything they need to actually get the work done. Or if you were working on a document, you can upload that document here. So then it's a single place for you to actually track all the resources you need. So if I were to go to the chat section, you see how it actually has a record of all these subtasks I created. And then if I were to mark the subtasks as you know one subtask done, then our system will understand that and actually update the progress as needed. So that is everything I have to do regarding a task. But let's just say if I want to move from one quadrant one to quadrant two, I can actually just drag and drop. So party matrix is very, very simple interface for you to prioritize. I'm going to pause there for a second because what I want to communicate here is that I have a very, very simple project and I have a very, very simple task. But within this project, it shows me the information that I need in a very visual way 
what I should be working on, right? So again, I'm, you know, I asked you to look at the things you decided to work on this morning. Did you work on the things that were actually important? Did you work on the things that happened to be the last email that was sent to you or someone just sent you a message? Uh, so if you don't have a clear sense of how to get started, then then how will you spend your time? So when you look at this party matrix, you can see that, hey, these are the things I really should focus my time on. Everything else should go in the other quadrants and I can talk to my manager and show them that these are where I'm focusing my time. So that's a project and that's um, that's a task. Now, a project can be customized. So let me show you actually how to create a brand new project. Uh, one one area that um, one thing I want to encourage you to do is actually when you get started with Party Matrix, create three projects. The first is your personal task, right? These are the things that you have to do on a personal basis. No one else has to see this project. No one else has to see all the tasks in it. Then the second project would be one where it's on a critical project that you're working on the number one project that you're working on. And the third are tasks you have in common with your manager. So that's those are the three type of projects that I encourage you to do. So let me show you how to create a project. You simply click on this matrix box right here. And then this is your list of projects. So in my, my actual account, I have something like 300 projects or so. And so what that's, uh, that spans across all sorts of spectrum, but I don't ever have problems understanding what I need to work on, just the way part of Matrix is organized. But let me show you how to create a new project. When you go choose a new project, you have a couple of options. You can use a, a blank project, which is what we're going to do. But at the same time, under public templates here, you can actually choose from some templates that we've created. And the idea around these templates is actually there are different methodology to think about the party matrix. Um, and so what sometimes, as I mentioned to you, that important or urgency, but at the same time, for example, the 30, 60, 90 day plan, if you're a new manager, actually this matrix is really, really helpful uh, because you can go and actually you can start planning out your, your work for the next quarter as a way to demonstrate how you're able to um, create value for the organization, right? Or if you want a performance, to crush your performance in order to get promoted. So that's, for example, is a matrix template that you can use. But I'm going to go ahead and do the blank template here. So new project, OK? So that's the project name. As I mentioned, you can do various types of projects, and every project has that quadrant, OK? And then down here, we have the type of uh, projects. So again, these are a couple of blank templates. All it's doing is customizing the, the project um, names, the quadrant names within the project. So I'm going to go ahead and do the basic party matrix, and then I can choose a color. You notice I kind of uh, skip over this user group. User group is an advanced feature, and the idea there is you can create departments. So for example, you may have a project and say, this is a sales project or a marketing project, and then all the marketing people are invited. That's what user groups are. Same thing with engineering, same thing with um, let's just say if you are a property um, property management company, you might have a group of people that are relevant to every single project that you have there. And so you can create a bunch of different user groups and then add the appropriate folks as needed. And then notes, add additional information about the project. So go ahead and create a new project right there. And that's it. You see how it actually looks exactly like what I've created earlier um, for a, what I showed you earlier where I had the matrix where I'm adding all my tasks. And so for me to edit this project, there's a little eye icon right here. You click this, it opens up what's called now the project details. The project details is the project name, and then you can star a project. Again, just like starring a task, starring a project surfaces to the top, and then you have members. Who are the people in this project? When you start a project and you don't have user group, then it's just you, right? And that's your personal project. But you may want to go and invite a teammate. Once you invite a teammate, the way it works is that they get to see everything within this project. So that's how permission control works. They're able to see everything. They're able to edit it. They're able to talk about it. They can click on a task and say, hey, by the way, like, you know, I disagree or agree or what's the status of this. Then you can actually um, customize the quadrant names too. The, the interesting thing about this is that as you use Party Matrix more and more, one thing you'll realize is that your own organization um, you, the company you work for, the organization you work for, as well as your own organizational style can change the way the quadrant's names might be. So that's a convention that you can create as part of the uh, domain expertise within your area of work. That's not something that we can 
we can ever fully understand because you understand your work better than than all. And then the second aspect of it is, as I mentioned, this is a communication tool, right? So use the quadrant names, use the color that communicate best to you and best to your manager, okay? So that's what you have here. So that is essentially the basics of a project. Now, one thing that's really interesting is I'm gonna jump to another project here. <clears throat> Um, that has a task, for example, the basic Eisenhower matrix. Now, the matrix is the main view, but one thing you can you notice is here we actually have different views. I, for example, I can be in list view. The list view takes everything you have in this quadrant and actually shows in a list. It is very, very easy to sort by due dates, modify dates, um, by name, by owners, et cetera. So sometimes you just want to go and identify what are the things that are actually requiring my attention um, regardless of the quadrants they're in. So the list view takes that information and display in a different way. The way that you can think about the, this is that all these tasks that you have within a project are just information, and then the views takes that information and sort it in a way to help you focus on every single uh, day. The third is the calendar view. The calendar view takes all the items that you have with due dates and actually display it. Um, and uh, it's a time-centric view. And so that task that I created earlier was due next week, but now imagine if I actually want to make sure I follow up on Tuesday, I just drag and drop it, right? Very, very straightforward. One thing I want to point out is that tasks that don't have due dates wouldn't show up here. So that is why I strongly encourage using due dates. The other thing you'll notice too is the chat section actually shows me all those things that I've done, the record of all those changes. It is so important in a team environment that if you make a change, you have a record of that. Because if your manager changes the due date, then you want to know, right? Like that what the due date was before and what the due date is now. And then vice versa too. If you assign a task to somebody and then they mark it as done on time, but that's because they've changed the due date three times, then that information is actually available and shows up here in Pertimatrix. And that's part of the record keeping. And this is called an immutable record. It cannot be changed by somebody else. That transparency is extremely helpful over time. Uh, and one of the things that, um, as I mentioned, the com as a communication tool, what happens is people within your organization leave all the time. Or in fact, you could be on sick leave or maternity leave or something like that too. So when that happens, how will everyone know what your priorities are? And so when you look at Pretty Matrix, it's so if I'm on leave, a teammate can look at my quadrants and say, okay, I see that you know high is considering these as critical priorities and these are uh, lower priorities, et cetera. And they may or may not agree, but at least my mindset is clear and I don't have to go and answer an email while on leave that says, oh yeah, this is important and this is not important. So you can think of Protomatrix as that way to save you so much time during using Protomatrix, but also while you're not using Protomatrix. So that's the calendar view. Um, and then you have the Gantt chart view. So Protomatrix can build Gantt charts for you automatically. If you have due dates and you have dependencies, uh, Protomatrix will actually link those tasks together and display it for you. And then you have the feed, which is sort of like a, you can think of it as Facebook feed that lists all the changes. So um, again, one of the things I want to mention is that there is a chat section. If you have any questions, send messages there. At the right moment in time, I'll try my best to answer them. So that's how Party Matrix looks and feel at the very, very basic level. Now, one thing that I want to mention is the 80-20 rule, right? Which is, if you were to use only 20% of the features in Party Matrix and get 80% of the value, I've shown it to you, which is one, create a project, right? Or actually three projects, as I mentioned, three projects, use the matrix, customize the matrix as needed, use the quadrant names and the colors that reflect best what how you want to work. And then two, create action items and set due dates. If you did that, you're able to so much better track the priorities that you have where um, you probably aren't doing before, or you know, there's no confusion as to what those priorities are. And then share that, just share that with your coworker, share that with your manager, so then everyone's the same page. And so imagine if all your teammates have one project that they're working on together, everyone knows exactly what everyone's priorities are. And then when you have a meeting, you're not going through and say, what are you working on? Because instead the meeting would be, hey, Let's talk about this. Is should this be a higher priority, or you know, should this be a lower priority? So that will save you a ton of time and effort. And if Party Matrix is able to help you identify one task 
that everyone's working on but should not be working on, then we've saved you a ton of, of resources. And then vice versa, if a pretty matrix can identify one task that everyone should be working on, but no one is, then again, that also ensures that we create a ton of value. So it's not about the number of things you get done, it's about the right things being done. And that's what the communication tool is. So you see that this is inside Microsoft Teams. Now let me show you the capabilities inside Teams where um, where Purdue Matrix is really, really powerful. And this is where our deep integration um, with Microsoft Teams kick in. When I use Microsoft Teams, one of the things that happens is that Purdue Matrix has something called a one-on-one -on -one view. So if you click on this tab, you can choose Purdue Matrix. And when you do that, what you see is you actually see two options. I have the ability to add a pro full project view. What a full project view is, it actually attaches a matrix a project matrix into this tab with your coworker. But the second thing I can do is actually add something called a one on one. And when you add a one on one, what it's doing is it's telling you what are all the tasks you have in common with this person across your entire party matrix, right? Across all your projects, all your responsibilities, and so forth. And so I have a one on one added already when I go to here. You can see that with, with Eugenia, I have all these tasks I have in common with her and all the tasks, the due dates and so forth. And so imagine for a second, if this was your manager, you and your manager go to Microsoft Teams, open the chat with each other, and now suddenly you see all the tasks you have in common across all your projects. Suddenly your one-on-one -on -one meeting will be so easy, right? Because instead of saying, hey, what are the things you're working on? And what are the things that are overdue? Where uh, where can I help you um, best? Your manager can go in here at any point in time. It doesn't have to wait until you have that one-on-one -on -one bi-weekly or whatever. You can go in here and see the status of all the different tasks. And here's the cool part. How many times have you had the situation where you had a meeting and you talk about a really awesome initiative that you're going to get done? Two weeks later, <laughs> You know, someone asks, hey, by the way, did you get that done? The course, and then the answer is like, uh, no, actually, I forgot to write it down, right? So with Proto Matrix, you're actually able to create that shared task directly here inside Teams. So for example, and say call to you tomorrow, right? So I can actually create the task directly here inside the, the matrix, uh, I'm sorry, inside the one-on-one -on -one view within the chat inside Microsoft Teams. So I can do call to you tomorrow, I can decide which project it belongs in, and then not only that, it invites all the, the, the two relevant people directly here. So I've saved a ton of steps. I don't have to go and open Prog Matrix. I don't have to go and actually create a task and then set a due date. I don't have to go and create a task and then assign to somebody. I can do it all directly from here. And all I have to do is type the action item. And voila, that's it, right? And so the task is created, the due dates is set, the relevant people are added into this conversation. Um, and so I can ensure that when I have that one-on-one -on -one meeting, I'm actually just spending my time creating and tracking action items instead of worrying about worrying about uh, opening another app and switching context. So that's how it works in the one-on-one -on -one view. There's a lot more to it in terms of the use cases that I think is extremely powerful. And so I highly recommend that if you use Microsoft Teams and you do think this one-on-one -on -one is, is powerful, add this one-on-one -on -one view with all your colleagues, the, especially the people that report to you or the people you work with across many, many projects. The other uh, cool thing about Proto Matrix is our deep integrations with all these other advanced capabilities inside Teams. So earlier I mentioned how um, you can go and create a task, but imagine if your manager sh shoot you an email or a message in Teams and say, hi there, you know, could you send me a report, right? So let me ask you a question. Imagine if right now someone sent you a message in Teams asking you to do that, what do you do? Well, you could send them a report right away, regardless of whatever you're doing, but more likely than not, you wanna schedule that task to ensure that you actually get it done because it may take you days or weeks or whatever to work on that report. But then how do you schedule that task? In a traditional application, you might have to go switch context, open another application, go find the appropriate project, add the task, set the due date, right? But with Party Matrix, you don't have to do any of those. You can actually just hover this dot, 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 you create PM item and that's it. I can actually go and create a task directly from the message that I was sent. Um, and I can set the due date. And if your manager say, hey, could you send me the report tomorrow? Well, our system will interpret that and set the due date for you. I can choose what quadrants it belongs in, what projects it belongs in. And here's another cool capability that um, I haven't seen anywhere else, 
which is the ability for us to link back to that moment in time when you made that um, that task. Let me give you an example. Imagine if someone asked you to do something and, and that's because you've just had this whole conversation with them around, um, around priorities and, and all that, and you create the task and to do in six months. Suddenly you look at Party Matrix and you're thinking, I forgot what we discussed. Well, Party Matrix deep links back to the Microsoft Teams conversation you had at that moment in time when you created that task. And so that's what the special link is. It brings you back to the right context, helping you understand the context as needed. And so you see how now I can go and create this task, right? And then I can share this in the chat. And so now your manager knows that, oh yeah, you know what? You know, I've not only, um, not only created the task, but I actually can share it right here. And then one thing you'll notice is that inside Party Matrix, these are called action cards. And the way the action cards works is that it's Party Matrix action items, but it's shared within the team's conversation. And so the, the other person can go and view the item, they can save the item as needed. The other thing you could do is you can actually also pull up another task directly from here. So you can open Party Matrix here, and then I have these tasks, and actually I can send this task directly from here as well. And so I'm able to send that over to my coworkers. This happens all the time. Let me give you a use case. I get an email from a uh, from somebody, a customer that's very important, and I want to alert my team on, hey, could you take a look at this action item? I would take that email, create a task from it, and then share this action card inside Microsoft Teams. So now they get a ping that says, by the way, this is something that's important. Right? They can open it and view it. So that's that's how that part works. So now let me show you something else, which I think is actually um, uh, really useful inside the Microsoft Teams integrations that we have, which is the ability to actually automate things. Um, so, so earlier I showed you how you know you're using Microsoft Teams, you're using Party Matrix, you're tracking all these different tasks. But there's there's things that you might want to do, sort of like the if this then that scenario. And so Microsoft released this really powerful capability called workflow automation. And so we've leveraged that. We're one of the very first application to leverage that. And you can do that. The way it works is the following. First, you have to create a group chat. So here you see how I've created a group chat, and you you click on this and you can create a group. And as opposed to just a chat with one person, it's a chat with a team, right? So I'm going to go ahead and open an existing group chat that I have right here. All right, so I have a group chat. And then if you go to the App Store here and you search for Party Matrix, one of the things you'll see is actually we have the application here, but at the very bottom we have workflows. So I won't go into all the details here because this is something you can explore. But what's really neat about it is this. I can create a workflow where and whenever anyone creates a Microsoft form submission, right? a parametric task is created, and then you notify the teams. Let me give you a simple use case. Imagine if your marketing team is seeking customer feedback, and for doing that, they created a Microsoft form. So I'm gonna go ahead and you know, imagine, I go here, go create a Microsoft form, and I can call this customer feedback form, okay? So you send this form to all your customers and so forth, right? So imagine if you did, um, how likely would you recommend, OK, so I'll go ahead and add that. OK, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and click on collect responses. And now I have this form right here. Now I go back to Party Matrix. What's neat about this is I can go and I can create an automation and you just simply click on this and then you sign in with Party Matrix. And essentially what I can say is I can say that when there's a customer feedback form submission, go ahead and um, um, choose that and then send a message inside that Teams chat. And that's it. I added it a workflow. So the way Party Matrix works is it's not only using Microsoft Teams, but it ties together with other Microsoft products 
in order to create one comprehensive solution so then you're not switching context. Because if you get this Microsoft form integration, I mean, Microsoft form submission, you want to alert all the appropriate people that, hey, there's a new customer submission. And so uh, not only that, it tracks it for you inside Pro Matrix, and that's how workflow works. So when you look at this, you'll see a couple of other integrations we have. For example, when a task is overdue, move it to the first quadrants, celebrate when a task is done. Imagine if you have a customer um, uh, that you want to win, right? And you create a task in Pro Matrix, and if you win that customer and you mark that task as done, right, then it sends a celebration inside, inside Teams. Um, leveraging your pretty matrix, et cetera. So that's how these additional workflow works. And actually, um, you can go and you can build whatever workflow that you want on an enterprise level with pretty matrix, and our team would support you in that. But these are the public ones that you can do today. So that's how Party Matrix works inside Teams. You saw how I have the, uh, this Party Matrix um, app that I pinned here. There's so many more capabilities that I'm not showing you, and that's something that you can explore on your own. Again, my emphasis today is on that 80-20, right, which is how do you get the most value out of Pro Matrix? And some of these advanced capabilities are useful if you have specific use cases, and that's something that we can consult you on um, for your organization, especially if you're looking at our enterprise solution or especially if you're really into the Microsoft Teams and the Outlook environments. So now I'm going to show you something actually that's slightly different, which is email management. Um, one of the things that's really interesting is that, you know, you, me, and every other person that you know probably receive way more emails than you'd like. And um, one challenge I have, for example, with my emails is sometimes I flag them. The problem is if I have five flags emails, that's fine. But if I have 50 flags email, 100 flags emails, I start losing track of them real quick. And then not only that, if I have a flag email, when do I get back to it, right? You can set a due date and so forth, but then I want to make sure that I'm actually um, getting the proper reminders and the and and um, the proper prioritization to ensure that I track this email. So Party Matrix is, has probably one of the coolest Outlook, the, one of the best Outlook integrations out there. And the way it works is simple too. So you go to the App Store here, search for Party Matrix. Once you install Party Matrix, um, you get this panel on the on the right hand side and the way i'll show you how to open it imagine if i got an email right imagine again my manager shot me an email or a customer shot me an email i can go click on this dot 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 instead of just flagging it by the way this is sort of the point instead of just flagging it i click on this um ellipsis i open pretty matrix right here and when i do I have the option to pin Proto Matrix, but I can capture the email. What capturing email does is it takes the email and converts it into a task. And then from that task, I can prioritize an appropriate project. So I'll show you that, right? I can say, hey, which project does it belong in? Okay, a new project, or let's just put in the basic Eisenhower matrix. I can choose what quadrants. Hey, this email is really important. I'm gonna put in quadrant one. And then here's the cool thing, which is I can assign to somebody else. Right, so I can assign to Eugenia for directly from here, um, and I can say due on Monday. So now I've taken an email, instead of just flagging it, I've converted into a task, I've prioritized it in a project, put the appropriate quadrant on it, set a due date, um, and we have the AI capability to actually extract the action items for you. So you, if you click on that, then our system will read that email and see, hey, is there a task here um, that I can actually uh, take out and put it for you so then you know what what to do never perfect right that's how ai is but it's one of those things where it could save you time and resources and that's it i click on create action item you see how after i create action item the right hand side here becomes a sort of just like your item detail panel right you have the project name you have the task name you have the ability to start task the owner etc but the neat thing is when you assign somebody else you're on this too so if this task gets done you get notification we have customers that use this as a way to ensure that they are not dropping the ball on the most critical customer emails. When they have external clients that's shooting them an email and they have, a let's say, a share support email address, or if you have your own personal email address and a customer shoots you an email, but then everyone else needs to know about it, if you forward the email, all you're doing is you're polluting more and more people's inboxes. And then not only that, you, there's no assurance that the tasks actually get done because you don't know if they read them. But with Proto Matrix, when you convert that email into a task, you know that someone's assigned to it 
and you know that there's a due date. And if it doesn't get done, it will show you, right? Party matrix shows you that this task is overdue. Um, and if you start, everyone will get the proper notification. So that's how it works. The cool thing about this too is in the resource section, that email is attached. So when I assign this to another teammate, the teammate can open the email as an EML file. Um, so they have access to email. But then what's neat is this. When I go back to Microsoft Teams, right? And I'll show you here. I go to back to this conversation here and I open Party Matrix. I can attach that task, just like I mentioned to you earlier. Okay, could you review this? You see how it actually attached that that task as an that email rather as an action card. And then now this person knows, oh hey, I got an email here and I can open it. And when I click on this view item, it opens up Party Matrix and then it has the resource section, the EML file. And then what's neat is that you can have a whole conversation um, around it directly in here within the context of this task. You can attach files, attach documents, and you're not sending an email back and forth and accidentally CC the customer, right? If you reply all, that you're going to create additional chaos. Where Party Matrix allow you to actually prioritize that email and actually have a conversation as needed. So that's how the Outlook integration works, and that's how it's so powerful. One thing that you'll notice too is after I create a task, it actually shows the Party Matrix um, tag right here. That means this email is prioritized. So then when I go back to this email, let's say I'll, I'll you know go to a different email here and I open up Party Matrix. Okay, right here, right. Imagine if I go here. Instead of actually just letting me create another action item, I have the ability to open the item instead. Um, so what that allows me to do is actually track an existing task as opposed to um, as opposed to creating more and more tasks. The other thing I can also do is actually imagine if I got an email that's actually relevant to an existing task, I can attach that email to an existing task instead. And that's what I hover over and I hover and I attach it right here. So imagine if you have three or four emails from the same customer, there's already a task you have, the appropriate people already assigned. Again, if you forward the email, you're just going to inundate everyone's inboxes, but instead you take that email and you attach an existing task. And now suddenly everyone has one centralized place where they understand the priorities and all the resource resources are in place. And that's how our Outlook integrations work. Again, I'm going through this at a very, very high level. Um, as if you really want to use this capability, you can explore it and adapt it to your specific use case. There's a couple more integrations that I want to highlight. I won't go into them in all the details just because in the context of time, but this is something that you can explore. Um, one, Go ahead and search for the priority matrix edge extension. So we have an edge extension and a Chrome extension, as well as um, a Safari extension if you use our iOS application. But if you go, if you go to the Microsoft Edge App Store, you can install Party Matrix um, for Edge and you sign in and everything gets linked together. One powerful use case with the Edge extension is the ability for me to convert any website that I want into a task. And so you can think of this as a way to share SharePoint documents. Um, you can think of it as a way to attach um, a web page that you're doing research on and 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 so forth. The other thing I want to show you is our connectors. So if you go to affluence.com on the panel here, you actually there's ability for you to click on connectors. We actually have integrations with Azure DevOps. We have integrations with Microsoft Planner. We have integrations with Outlook Calendar. Um, and what it's doing is it's actually pulling in all of these tasks that you have in all these different applications, right? Imagine you have tasks in to-do, you have your Outlook calendar, you have tasks in planner. Um, you, when you connect, what Party Matrix does is it actually creates a different project for each of these software add-on, and then it pulls all your tasks over into Party Matrix. It's a one-way sync. So it's not two-way sync. As you update Party Matrix, it doesn't go and update everything else. That's not the intention, but the intention is for you to see all those other tasks. And so as you make changes to them, it pulls into Party Matrix for you because we understand that you know everyone uses too many different software um, and that's a challenge. And so hopefully over time, what you'll find is that Party Matrix serves at that centralized place for you to track all your tasks, prioritize them, because once you do, you can access that in Outlook, you can access that in Teams, um, and you don't need all these other software to actually track all these different tasks and then lose track of them. So that's how that integrations with the connector works. Again, it creates different projects for it. Um, and then as you update those um, those other external software, it pulls it into your party matrix. So Microsoft um, 
And Purdue Matrix also integrates with several other really powerful Microsoft capabilities. Um, so for example, when you send an email, uh, you're able to attach Purdue Matrix. And not only that, you can go and and you can create action cards. So again, when you, I mean, let's just say you do want to shoot an email to somebody, right? But you want to include the Purdue Matrix action card. You can actually go here, open up Purdue Matrix. And what's really neat is as you're composing a new email, you actually have the ability to attach a Purdue Matrix action card. And instead of just asking somebody to do something, as a text, instead, what you're doing is you're actually allowing uh, them to see the Purdue Matrix task itself, and they can open it, they can respond to it. And so, the really, really useful way to have again Purdue Matrix as a centralized place to track all those tasks. So, I'm going to take a pause there um, because I know I cover a lot of different things, and I'm going to go back to the Microsoft Teams matrix view because again i want to emphasize how you can get so much bang for the buck by focusing on using Purdue matrix as a communication tool and inside teams and then everything else is icing on the cake um, we have so many different ways in which you can use Purdue matrix um, and then what happens is as you use Purdue matrix more and more and you're customizing quadrants you're customizing uh, workflow and so forth once let me give you an example imagine if you have you create a party matrix and that matrix is a um, employee onboarding uh, priority list, right? You say, hey, as a new employee, these are the things you need to do. These are the things you should read. These are the resources. Once you do, you can go and choose the uh, to save that as a template. So now when you have a new employee, instead of doing all this work over and over again, you can actually launch a project as a template instead. And you say, this is due today. And then all the future due dates are propagated for you. Same thing applies to if you have a new, let's say, consulting clients that you're onboarding. And with the consulting clients, you have all these things you have to do for them. So that's a capability that we have as well. There's several other things that makes Purdue Matrix really unique, the ability to work with external people. So we actually have that capability for you to actually share Purdue Matrix with external to your organization. Um, and that's something that you know many, many products out there don't really do. And for example, Microsoft Planner doesn't really do that. Um, because you only can only access the internal stuff. And then um, you might also be, want to share a read-only version of Purdue Matrix. You can do that. Um, you can generate reports of Purdue Matrix. You can do that. Um, you can generate um, history of all the changes that you need. You have. You can do that. And then Purdue Matrix also has workload reports. Again, what I'm trying to show here is what's possible from the data that you have, if you go to reports, Purdue Matrix actually has um, reports for you on your daily re usage, your um, weekly usage, and so forth, in order for you to understand what is it that you work on. Example, you do your quarterly review, Purdue Matrix can actually show and generate that report that shows your uh, all the things you worked on this past quarter that will help you with your performance reviews. I'm not diving into all of those today, but just understand that your task in Purdue Matrix as you mark them as done is actually really, really helpful to your own career progression as well and be able to communicate to others what you're working on. One last thing is there's this thing called the home view. You'll probably notice and I, I kind of gloss over it, but if you click, you see this, this red um, number right here. Well, I've mentioned about all those due dates and reminders and so forth. This right here is notifications, right? When you have things that are due or things that require your attention, that's what get updated. And then it'll show up here in the alerts. And so when you um, send someone a message, when you assign a task to your coworker, it will send them an alert right here. And now they know that they can go and actually um, look at it and so forth. And when they look at the task, it updates Purdue Matrix. So with that, um, I'm actually going to go back to here and see if there's any questions um, here in the chat. And as always, I'm more than happy to answer other questions as well. Um, if there's any other questions, thank you for the very positive feedback there. I appreciate it. Um, and so again, this meeting is recorded and we'll be sharing this with uh, on the webinar website. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at hired.affluence.com. Or if you have questions about your uh, company enterprise use cases, uh, shoot us a message at support or sales at affluence.com and we'd be happy to accommodate. Thank you all.